Sensitivity is intelligence. With grace and skill, you have abundance. Welcome to the Psychic Hour. Host Kelly Brickle is a psychic medium healer, numerologist, and teacher. Her passions are learning about the soul and energy. Whether it's through spirit, emotion, or vibrational numbers, there's always a pathway of information waiting to help. Now, here is your host of the Psychic Hour, Kelly Brickle. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Psychic Hour on WLTKDB. It's a lovely day today, and we're going to have a great show. We have Althea Gray today as a guest, so I'm honored to have her on um, and learn about her background and how she came into this work and really infused her passion along her life with healing. So i um, really excited to talk to her, and please, towards the middle end of the show, we take questions. Um, so if you have a question for Althea or myself regarding healing with what we're talking about, ask away. Um, it's one of the most wonderful ways to interact and to learn about your own journey and your own healing within your life too. When we have these wonderful guests on. So we always talk, hello, Michelle. We always talk about a topic before we dive in. Um, that's the nature of the psychic hour. And really today, the topic that I wanted to focus on was movements. And movement is such an important topic because for me, that's really where healing is. And a lot of us get tired, overwhelmed, and we have to take a break. You know, we have to recoup, we have to rest. And sometimes our rest isn't deep. Sometimes, you know, we're, we're called to keep going so we don't fully restore. And we find ourselves not being in full repair because we're constantly in the mode of going, going, and going. And so we are ingrained for movement. Actually, movement is vital. It is the foundations of how society keeps going. You know, you better show up. <laughs> you know, we all have to work together. Um, you got to wake up and keep going. But actually, as we're forcing ourselves to move and we haven't properly repaired, there's a lot of parts within ourselves that actually kind of refuse to move and and think about it there's one day you wake up and you're like oh my back right oh i can really feel it today <laughs> or oh i have a headache or oh this situation is really bothering me and it could be like an emotional one too um you just feel the toll of whatever situation you know on some level has been bothering you but you feel it so very strongly. And it can be overwhelming sometimes with what makes us finally stop and go, I better take care of this. And so it's so important to be curious as we're going forward, as we're stepping one foot in front of the other and we are moving because there's a lot of funny clues that present themselves to us to let us know about how we really feel about things. Um, how much we really need rest or how much we can really push ourselves. And that curiosity can really speak volumes. The curiosity actually to just be well, and sometimes we do need assistance. Sometimes we do need, let's say, a friend or family member for support, or we need um, somebody like a healer to really open up that understanding of, hey, I guess this was going on or yeah, I, I just didn't think about it like that. Or I didn't know it was affecting me to such a degree. I know it, I knew it hurt. So that curiosity really for me is, is movement. It is this curiosity that just keeps going about how am I today? Um, do I feel good? Um, how's my energy? And those check-ins and you have this spiritual movement in your curiosity and of course this mental movement in your curiosity too that goes with your body and it's so important and i just want to say hello to everyone coming in so hi mary hi kevin hello hello and for me movement really is so important because i feel like the universe is expanding the, the nature of society, sure, is to build and grow and move, but the nature of the universe to me is always expanding. In what ways? 
I don't know always, <laughs> you know? That's like the beauty of the mystery, but there is an expansion going on. There is a natural movement at play. And it seems to get in touch with our greatest healing and our grounding, there has to be movement on the energetic level. There has to be movement on the more subtle levels. And if we tune into ourselves, and it could be with meditation, it could be with a body scan. Sometimes within yoga, you learn about body scans. Um, it could just be self-reflection, but there's opportunities to understand those more subtle frequencies, those subtle energies. Because when we're going and we're looking at the outside world, the external, there's too much stimuli for us to really look within. And so we have to actually treat it as a separate practice. And sometimes I think that sounds overwhelming in itself. You know, oh, I have to have a separate way of being. I have to have this separate coping mechanism. Um, and it's so helpful. It's so nourishing that it becomes just a way of drinking water. Um, yes, there's little check-ins and then there's longer check-ins. And we're constantly doing it anyway. It's just wouldn't you like to, I guess, increase the quality. And for people who have been to healers, you know, you are inviting that energy in when somebody just sits with you and looks at your energy and looks at your subtleties. Um, you invite somebody um, to facilitate that space for you to open up further. So it's already happening on multiple levels for people who do have curiosity within this work, who do want to have healing within their life, their body, their spirit. It's already very naturally happening. So I do invite you in some way to really make the inner world of your life a place where you visit the inner world of your life, a place that you start to know a little bit better and to understand, wow, okay, my shoulder maybe feels weird or my foot feels weird or like maybe I have a stomach ache today. Um, if I look at myself, is there anything else that comes forth? If I feel myself, if, is there anything else that comes forth? If I listen to myself and hear myself, is there anything that comes forth? And it's it doesn't have to make sense. You know, this world, uh, this inner world doesn't have to make sense. In fact, sometimes <laughs> it doesn't at all. Um, in fact, I really want you in, to invite you to think like that. It's not logical. I think the more and more you get used to it, it starts to have its own patterns where you can follow and you could, you know, find a different type of logic as you would. Um, but it's not really supposed to make sense at first. Sometimes, you know, I feel my own stomach and I get like uh, a song playing in my head. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? And sometimes I know right away and other times I'm like, is that connected to something? Let me just let that, let, let's let that sit and linger. And um, regardless of it comes fast or slow, just allow yourself to go there. Um, you know, we go on vacations a lot and we restore ourselves when we travel um, and we need that rest and relaxation. Well, you know, you can kind of, it's not the same as vacation maybe, but uh, you could, you could do like a retreat and really go in deep and, you know, have some really nice thoughts around that and environments. But um, we kind of have to retreat and take a form of a vacation with ourselves and go, okay, where do I need that rest and relaxation? And there's a complementary nature to energy. Like think about it, like feminine, masculine, light, dark. Um, you know, when we rest and restore ourselves, we have tremendous then bursts of energy. We really do. And uh, when we have these tremendous bursts of energy, we really get rather tired. Really, really, we get rather tired at times. So the complementary nature of it all. With that said, okay, hi, Kara. It's nice to see you. With that said, um, hi, Tiara. Everyone's kind of like, coming. Sherry. Oh, yeah, we got people coming in. Hello, hello. Um, I'm glad I got to say hi to you. Um, so with that said, we will um, be back in a moment talking to Althea, but just to consider movement, it's complementary nature. And if you're really, really, really tired, 
give yourself some space for relaxation, and then you'll be back in the flow of your movement. So with that said, we will see you in a few. Uh, we'll be right back. Hello, everybody, and we are back. Goes by like just like that. So I want to bring Althea in and give her a warm introduction. Hello, Althea. Hello. How are you, Kelly? I'm doing good. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. It's very snowy here in New Mexico today. I would say it's... there's at least eight inches of snow that has come down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Whoa. I didn't hold up. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Well, you look cozy and beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. Thank you. It's nice to have you. I want um, to introduce you to everybody. So with that said, Althea Gray is a healer, plain and simple. She was born with the capacity to heal and has devoted much of her life to this noble profession. During the last 22 years, she has owned her skills and invented many tools and systems to aid other healers of various backgrounds taking old systems and weaving them into modern context, integrating healing and medicine. Her first healing clinic was in Sri Lanka, and today she has gratefully served as honorary consul of Sri Lanka for over 14 years. With her many accomplishments, Althea has served as officer for the Global Foundation for Integrative Medicine and is currently active with teaching at her school, Althea Gray's International Institute for Professional Healers. Welcome. Thank yes, you. <laughs> you have done so much in your life. It's just, it's wonderful um, to have you here. And I know just by learning a little bit about you, um, you come from a lineage of healers. Yes. My grandmother, my family's from Nicaragua and uh, a little country above uh, uh, Costa Rica and under El Salvador. So it's a little little country there. My grandmother was a, a native person. She was a uh, native to uh, native Indian from Nicaragua. And she was an extraordinary healer. Extraordinary. Yes. So my, I've inherited that ability. Uh, my daughter has inherited, but I would say um, probably other family members did not. With <laughs> The knowing that you had of your your grandmother, did you always think to yourself when you were young, I'm interested in this, or this is a path that I'm kind of curious about? Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just, uh, and I and I I say this because a lot of people listening today probably have children who are starlight. I call them the star children who are already conscious, they already, their sensitive fields are so developed, they can look at people and see exactly who they are, even when they're three years old. Um, they uh, are, are in tune and see the, 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 the beyond the physical world. They may have bleed throughs of their past lives. And this is operating all the time with this type of child. And I was one of them. And I remember ancient knowledge and wisdom and things that a child would not normally quite understand, and I did. So it was with me all of my life. I studied special ed. I have a degree in interior design, art history. And I, you know, I love those creative things, but I never imagined that I would be doing this work. It was just always a part of me. And I've studied it all with great teachers all over the world, um, uh, honing my skill, not necessarily as a healer, because uh, a healer's consciousness almost dictates how well they, be, they do healing work, right? So I, um, it, it was in 97, I think it was, that a Weechel grandmother told me I had to do this. Otherwise, everything would be taken away. And... Uh, and it happened to me, just as she said. And uh, a doctor from Sri Lanka 
uh, had one of my sessions and said, oh, um, I want you to work in my clinic in Sri Lanka. So I never started at the bottom. I always, I started, I walked right into my destiny immediately. So for all of those out there who think um, that, oh, it's too late. Oh, you know, you know, after age 50, a lot, you know, what else can I do? My whole life opened up and everything that I had been waiting, it was waiting to come forward. So it can happen at any time for anyone, anyone. Uh, your destiny is always waiting for you to say, okay, I'll do it. I'll do my, I'll do what I came here to do. Did it come as a shock to you at that time or did it lead you to a moment where it made sense for you? Well, uh, it, it, the transition, because I was this way all my life, it didn't seem different, but to create a actual practice. And that's a thing for people who have these abilities. How do I start? How do I create a practice? How do I do this is a big deal. And there are not many mentors who are passing this on. How do I do this? How do I get started? What are my responsibilities? How do you, and you mentioned taking care of yourself. The pause. Everyone has to have a pause. You have to restore yourself. There's a lot that's involved in becoming a healer. So um, you are absolutely right. Your message today was absolutely right on. <laughs> it was inspired by you. So this energy was wonderful. <laughs> um, with uh, knowing all your life on a certain level and having that awareness so young, was that nourished within you? Yes, because I uh, I literally, was, and I still do this, I'm a nonstop reading and listening to great teachers, reading great materials, listening to, I have wonderful guidance, you know, and, and, and guides change in your lifetime. I had a lot of angelic beings in the beginning, and now they're mostly star beings that help me. So I've thought most of those inventions were aided by star people. Wow. Do you work with a, a certain type of star person or seed, star seed uh, group? No, they haven't, they haven't presented themselves as a group per se. They're just particular beings that are in resonance with my own light. And they see us, where I'm going and they say, okay, we can help. She's the one that can bring this forward. That makes sense. And so do you find them most often within your healings or do you find them now um, in your everyday life? They're here all the time. And they love me. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> How um, is, whether it's a feeling or a message or even visuals, how is the energy different than, let's say, the angelic realm or other um, beings you've worked with? Oh, this is an interesting question. Angelic beings are such high-frequency beings, and you know their presence because you feel euphoric. They give you a kind of sense of uh, spiritual bliss. If you kind of blissed out in the presence of angels. And they're playful. They're playful. Um, they like music. So people who hear music all the time are probably connecting to the angelic realm. There's a lot of music there. And um, I don't necessarily see angels in terms of gender. They seem to be genderless, you know, but very light, very light. And uh, you feel lifted by angels. Um, I don't necessarily get, uh, sometimes I get messages from angels, but they're mostly there to support you, take care of you, protect you. And um, the star being started to come in in around 2012. I had a shift, a shift. And then I started to bring in uh, ways to protect people from other forces that are trying to uh, thwart mankind's uh uh, entry into the new earth. That's a whole big other topic by itself. 
the ent entry into the golden age. And, um, and I have tools to uh, help increase the light within the planet, within the person, within the consciousness. And so these tools are so simple, you would think, my goodness, how can you do that? But it's, it's star medicine's always simple. It's never complicated. I would imagine to it ampl amplifies our natural abilities with what we can do. Yes, yes. And that, um, resonance, once your light levels reach a certain place, then you're in resonance. The word resonance is very important um, because then you are uh, lined up with things that are of the same light levels. Get it? Even wisdom, knowledge. And so I often tell my talk to my students about St. Peter. He had the keys to heaven, but he had the light codes to those mm -hmm. higher levels of consciousness. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's it's not just a physical key. It's a way of of, of being your consciousness. Yes. Um, there's kind of a law that I really believe in. It's um, whatever your energy is. Um, somebody will match it yes. and and then the only person that can enter enter your frequency is someone who's actually higher than it yes now you right. might be affected but to actually fully once you've established your boundaries and the knowing of yourself someone can only enter when they're a higher vibration and actually change and help expand your light you said something very important that all human beings are sovereign beings and so we have all of them need our permission, even angels, to enter our field. They sometimes surround you. They would like to come in, but you have to invite them. So uh, it's very important, boundaries and be giving permission. With um, permission to grow within yourself when people are ready, how do they activate their light levels? Or can you talk about um, the concept of light levels for people who are learning? Okay. So everything, you can say light equals energy, equals vibration, equals light. They're all the same thing. Everything is light. And I think there have been some amazing teachers in the world who have said the same thing. And scientists have come to that understanding, too, that everything is light. And so um, how, how can an everyday person increase their light? It's Number one is to stay as loving as possible. Love has a, a, a light measurement of over a million. So when you measure the light, it's one million. If you measure the word hate, it's 1,000. The same as cancer, same as all diseases. So you, that's easy to do. And when you catch yourself not being in a loving place with yourself or others, just say, I, I'm aware of this, and you can change it. Another way is uh, the, the foods that you eat. Make sure it's clean food energetically. Clean foods. Clean environment. Everything. These, yes, these things increase light. Plants, living things. You know, we tend to not think of plants. I, I'm, I got into a whole... Uh, consciousness connection with the plant and the mineral world. They're so sentient. And so we have to take care of those things and they take care of you. Right. Um, uh, and people say, well, meditation, I would say, yes, meditation. Um, most people have trouble understanding what meditation is. They think they have to stop everything. And so I just want to give a quick word about meditation that we have two minds. One is a thinking mind and the other mind is linked to universal consciousness. So when you first close your eyes, you're in that empty space of universal consciousness. And when thoughts come in, you open your eyes and then close them again because you have to train your, your, your body literally to get used to that space. And then you can hold on to it longer and longer. And those things then will start to increase your light. So it's simple things. Simple things, but they really change the way that your brain works. Yes. And that's what you're able to experience. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of this work, um, 
it's it's something a little bit, I guess, complex to think about for a second. But a lot of this work, when people have, I guess, tested people's brains um, when they're in meditative states or if they're doing um, healing or reading work, their brain is almost asleep or it's in a very deeply meditative state. Mm -hmm. It's it's not alert the same way as if you're just walking the world, looking around and or even learning things. Exactly. It's in it. a whole uh, the empty space is just as important as the space that we see is that's filled with everything. So as you said, the pause, the pause is very poignant. <laughs> <laughs> to remember to pause, right? Sometimes it's, it's hard to remember to pause, uh, you know, cause we need to pause so much, honestly, cause uh, the world's really turning very fast. A lot of people have been feeling stressed out. And so you talked about even light levels and um, do you notice when you're tuning into, let's say, an energy of a space or even a person, do you notice that, let's say, part of their body has very high light levels and other parts of their body, let's say, is not as consistent? Well, yes, you can measure, for example, the light level of each chakra. And, and of course, we are, as our consciousness develops, we're using... Uh, at least in my work, I'm using uh, 16 different chakras. But as people's consciousness develops, they can access further uh, 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 levels of, uh, you know, uh, higher levels of uh, chakras, ha ch higher chakra levels, excuse me. So um, uh, when I do healing work, I, I actually feel the whole person first. I don't feel a person in parts. And, um, and sometimes it's frenetic. Their energy is fried. And they're fried from their, you know, electromagnetic field is fried from electronics or just too much stimulus going on or uh, bad food, <laughs> you know, uh, or just um, life. Yes. Yes. So what I do is a it's like chaos, right? So what I do, I don't try to fix it. I hold it. And then it starts to reorganize itself little by little by little by little back into balance. Because we may not know which thing to pull out to create the balance. So you hold the space for the person and then they find this even space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I understand now. You answered my question. I was like, oh, okay. You hold it. And that makes sense. That makes sense. You just like listen to it, right? Mm -hmm. What would you like to do to move? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Um, I think that's so beautiful how you just simply hold space. And is that something that you learned to do or is that something that you learned over time? I actually learned this uh, from a great teacher that I studied with for 10 years and he uh, and he would say don't go, when you go into a healing space don't automatically uh, try to rearrange it don't think that you know the right way to do it hold the space because the person own uh, consciousness will know how to do it and then you can go into other things but you can never work in a chaotic space Right, you first have to create a a, a place of balance. Right, absolutely. absolutely. Then again, the magic. <laughs> <laughs> when when you first started healing and um, you were learning about your own energy and how to create space for yourself, did you ever have moments where you're like, "It's wow, it's not working, it's not working," or did you just feel like this natural flow within the work? The very beginning, I'm going back to the very, very beginning. It's a very interesting thing. I may have doubts about a lot of things in my life, but I never had it about this. Okay, cool. Never, I love that. I, I know that sounds wild, but oh. <laughs> I, I make terrible mistakes with lots and lots of things. I can't even find my way around the block. I mean, I have the direction. And I make terrible mistakes, but in healing, I just seem to understand it. You were born to do it. Yeah. yeah I was born to do this. Yes. I have to say, and, I, and, I, and all of you out there who are born this way, 
uh, having teachers, teachers help you, um, a good teacher uh, allows the information to flow to you in a way that you can take it in and you can utilize it. I'm not going to tell you this is what you should do. There's, in fact, that my teacher had said, uh, never use a formula. I I I believe in that. Yes. <laughs> sometimes I sometimes I like a little bit of it, but I'll just like break it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's not needed here, right? But yes, I hundred percent agree with that. <laughs> yes. It works. That's how I, you know, because sometimes you think, oh, I do this, do this, and maybe some things you set up that way, right? But right. you have to allow, you have to allow everything to fall in its right place. And you, how do you start that? You can start it with intention, right? intention to heal intention to heal and then you said too it, you just it it flows for you you know your power of belief has always been so so strong and that power of belief is so important within healing work yes um and i don't think you have to be religious you find a lot in a lot of countries people who do healing work are very religious uh, I wouldn't say I'm religious, but I, I'm very spiritual. But I'm also, I always say I'm a healer with a healthy respect for science. Because sometimes we need science. Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes your clients need science. Absolutely. I, uh, I'm a big fan of the belief in possibility. Because you mentioned earlier, you know, we... We don't know compared to, you know, the universe, compared to something much greater than ourselves, whether it's like something sacred, something that we have reverence in, everyone has different belief systems. Um, we, we just don't know, but the great belief in what's possible. And I know so many wonderful healers and, and myself when I was starting, um, I didn't believe in myself. I didn't. And I was constantly skeptical, even though I was like very curious and hopeful. And that's something I had to really fight. And so it's powerful that that's been so strong within you. And when you do believe just the the amount of energy that opens up is just incredible. It really is. Yes. And, and, and you have to uh, allow yourself the next steps. Again, it's that allowing, right? holding the space and allowing things to happen. And we have to do, sometimes we, we can be too much of an engineer. Sometimes we can put <laughs> things in place and allow the universe to work for you. Channel it. Yes. Channel and allow. Um, so you talked earlier too about, you know, there's no one way, right? We're talking about that right now. But you mentioned that you've worked with so many different types of um backgrounds with healers, with teachers. So in your work, you've created new systems. Have you been inspired by all the different people that you've worked with? Yes, because even places, I, I, had, uh, I have traveled all around the world and not necessarily because I wanted to see something. It's because I was guided, I was guided, I was told go there. And what it did is shifted something energetically for me. And that's why I needed to go or I needed to connect to some place or something because that rewired me in some way, you know, and, and I think a lot of you, a lot of your, your, um, uh, the people that are listening, listeners today, um, a lot of you probably are like that and you didn't realize, oh, why did I, why did I travel this place? You know, <laughs> what was I doing here? And for teachers, um, I, I always kind of got the, a zing. Oh, yes, I, this is what I needed. Sometimes you don't need the whole package. You just need certain things. That's true. That's true. Um, so when you've gone places, um, has it been sometimes just the location? Uh, the reason I asked that is because um, there was a class that I was blessed to hear you um, uh, teach, and you talked a lot about sacred sites and the energy there. Yes, very much so. And, uh, you know, I, I really want to encourage people to uh, not think that it's such a big deal to go someplace, you know, 
I, some of my friends said, well, oh, you're so lucky. You went, I'm not lucky. I, I made a decision that I'm not going to buy, you know, $500 pair of shoes. I'm going to go for the, the zing. You know, I, I'm an energy junkie. <laughs> I like the zing of places. I prefer that to, you know, a pair of Manolo shoes or something. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, and I'm still like that. My daughter's the same and she'll find some incredible places and she'll say, let's, let's go, let's, let's go over there. And I go, wow, this is amazing. You know, <laughs> that's perfect. I love that you talk about the zing, but you, uh, you know, you think about that with places too. So, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. I get, I, you're, you're, you're making me think a different way actually with physical places because sometimes right I overthink going to physical I'll look for zings in other areas but you're right why not look for a zing there wow that's so cool I love and, that and maybe there's a guardian there that uh you, it will be resonating with you and you will suddenly get all these downloads in a place that nobody else would have thought of going but because of what was there it opened you up in a certain way Makes sense. And it could Can be you, right around you. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, you don't have to get on a plane so far away necessarily. It could be right down the road. So uh, you talk about guardians. Can you um, describe that more with how you would find them in certain locations and what um, they represent? Oh, well, um, land, the land is uh, our native people believe they are protectors of the earth. And so here on my property, uh, there are a lot of native energies. And when uh, people do ceremonies, I remember when I first moved here, people had done ceremonies. And and those ceremonies belong to them. So um, I made a promise not to do that. And so, and I honor them and I thank them for protecting me, protecting this earth that we live on. And uh, there are also guardian beings who take care of certain places. That makes sense. And all you have to do is uh, ask. Say, uh, uh, I would like, can you present yourself to me? And give what, me permission, you know. What has been your experience um, when they presented themselves to you? Well, I'll give you an example. This is not necessarily a guardian being. This has to do with Sasquatch. <laughs> because I live in the woods here. I wish everybody could see this beautiful snow all over the trees and things. Um, uh, I was doing a uh, class. I had a guest speaker, uh, a person, uh, a husband and wife who were, uh, who really that their passion was Sasquatch, right? And, uh, and I said, oh, uh, my professional clearers, uh, they definitely want to hear about hear, hear them speak. So the evening that we were doing our presentation, um, all of a sudden I felt something come in my front door. Oh. And I said, whoa, something Because my sensitive feel, and I'm sure yours is, very developed. So I, I can feel a shift in, in energy. And then afterwards, um, I had some gifts on my uh, steps outside, pine cones all on each step in a row, all the way down. We know pine cones don't do that, right? They don't just yes. do in an exact row. And then sometimes I would feel the something behind me, and I take my hose and go. I got you. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. And then I found a footprint outside, wow. and I took a picture of the footprint. And some of the Sasquatch like making art with in the woods. There's a there's a whole you can go on YouTube and uh, um, I don't know if Kit I forgot what she calls her channel, but uh, you can see it's common uh, knowledge now of their beautiful artwork that they they bend branches and they make beautiful things, and they're interdimensional beings. But uh, I definitely brought one in that. Uh, you know, someone else told me they lived in the back here, but I didn't know. But because I brought, you know, brought the attention to it, it definitely said, oh, 
<laughs> hi and was right by the house and back to the front door wow so do you do you feel sasquatch around from time to time or is it okay all right yes definitely feel them around and 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 for all of you out there, if you're suddenly interested in something and you find yourself looking it up and reading and reading and reading, it's because you're probably getting information on the uh, on a subtle level from beings who want you to take a look at it. So listen, it's not just because you have an intellectual curiosity, it's that sometimes you're getting uh, feedback from another place that say, says, take a look at this, right? Did you okay. find it? Girl, that's happening to you. <laughs> Did you find yourself researching some of these things before it happened? Um, I uh, really never uh, spent uh, paid much attention to Sasquatch until I had the uh, guest speakers, and then and now uh, it's it seems like I'm seeing information about it all the time. It opened up the energy. That makes sense. Yes, it, it opened it up, and uh, but I do want to make this a statement that. Not everything's positive out there. There are some things that are dark. And and if you feel that, listen to it. Like yeah. there are some areas that maybe you're climbing and hiking and you encounter something. Don't, you know, listen to it. Don't go forward. <laughs> Put your own stop sign up. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. You have to listen to it. You know, sometimes we don't completely know, but you have to listen to what feels right and what feels wrong. And um, that's something that is always interesting, whether it's residue, whether it's um, something that you just feel you don't resonate with or, or something else at play. It's uh, you have to listen to your instincts. We have a, we all have a sensitive feel. Uh, some of us have it more developed than others, but we all have it. And I'm always amazed at, uh, for example, uh, uh, how, how many times people will go in a house or a place and they'll say, Ooh, I don't like how that feels. Well, they're probably right. There's things there that they should be, uh, aware of. So people do have, you know, they don't have to be healers to pick up on things. For sure. Um, in, in your, uh, I guess, understanding, do you feel like chaos energy is different from dark energy? Yes. Okay. Because what we're experiencing now on the earth, because we're shifting, we're shifting into a high vibrational earth. You've heard of the good earth, the new earth. Right. So it's a high frequency earth. It'll look the same, but it has a different vibration. And we've had, you know, the, between the, the, the uh, Mayan calendar prophecies uh, and Kali Yuga, the Kali Yuga period, which uh, ends in 2025. Um, that period lasted 27,000 years. And we're living. We are. All of you who are listening, you decided to be on earth in a most exciting time because so many things are ending right now. And so you have chaos because that's what happens before change. So old systems are breaking down. Relationships are either starting or ending or we don't. Everything is changing to such an extent that it feels like we have to learn life all over again. Absolutely. Absolutely. It feels the Kali Yuga. Oh, go, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. Kali Yuga. Go ahead. The Kali Kali. I'm making sure I say it right now. Kali Yuga. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't say it right. But this period, um, can you uh, describe, because you're talking about systems breaking down, is is that what's going to happen at the end of the period? Um, can you, can oh, you it talk about already. it more? Than yeah, it, it already is. I mean, you can just, I, I, Forgive me, everyone. I, I stopped watching the news. I'd rather read it because it it's uh, I feel it, I feel it too much. You know, people's pain around the world, and um, and so that's taking care of myself. That for all of you feel have permission to do that. Take care of yourselves. If it's easier to read things than read it, um, but everyone who is uh, listening today. They've all experienced things just not working the same way anymore. 
and they're not supposed to. And, you know, the whole coaching industry is, you know, is mushrooming, even down to the tiniest things. Like we're having to relearn simple things like childcare. You know, it's not just about how do we create a happy home, uh, business opportunities, um, how to feel your heart, how to love, and, 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 and uh, people having to learn a new language about life. So the first steps is what feels loving. Start always with that feel, you know, what was that old song? That love, being tuned to that loving feeling. Uh, uh, I think you know. I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to think of the, I. <laughs> yeah, that song. Oh, I can't think of it right now, but I hear it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, the righteous brothers, the old song. No, oh, that's lost the loving feeling. We don't want to lose the loving feeling. <laughs> no, we want to be in touch with it. Because um, and start to simplify things right now for all of you who are listening. Uh, simplify. Don't make things complicated. Because when you simplify and you start emptying your space, this is what I really love. This is what I don't need, and and, and start to build from there. Uh, allow you, it gives you room to allow something else to come in. And if you don't know what it is, it's okay now. You don't have to be locked in anything because it's just turning and chaos and chaos. There's And it's going to be more. But the way you hold on to yourself and your home and your life, is make sure you know yourself. Make sure you're in this loving place with yourself and those around you. And, uh, and have those basic things in place because that's your rock, isn't it? Yes protect your space. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's the place you can reset sometimes when the world is a little bit much and maybe um, you're learning how to do that in other places, but you can reset in your own space. Um, part of helping me reset. And so you mentioned that, you know, you have sensitivity to the news. I, I do too. Um, do you have sensitivity to, let's say, movies too as well? So part of my reset is to not watch certain types of movies. Yeah. I'll be like, I can't do that right now. I just it I, makes me I, feel I, a certain way. No, because you're we're all in this flux of energy that is changing and it's impacting us. So how do you take charge? There's simple things you can take. You can make a choice. I don't have to watch that kind of movie. I don't have to have my consciousness filled with chaos because if you could do something about it that's different yeah but you can't and the, what you can do is uh look at how you live your life how you are with other people with yourself how have you created a good environment where you feel stable very important and sometimes people are in situations where other people are create, making uh, life unstable for them, you know, make pulling the rug out from under their feet in some way. And always remember who you are. But make sure you have a constant somewhere. Even if it's just, I know myself and I know if I keep walking, as you said, movement, keep that, keep, don't ever stop, keep moving. And soon you'll move out of the storm. I, I liked what you said just somewhere uh -huh. <laughs> find a place for yourself. Yeah. Even if it's just, you know, somewhere, <laughs> it doesn't have to be right in front of you. Um, it just cultivates somewhere. Um, even if it's in your mind. Exactly. You have to find a constant. Constant is, <laughs> that's, it's a, it's a very fun concept constant here on earth, isn't it? <laughs> Well, everything is in flux and change all the time, but you have to have somewhere for humans to feel okay. They have to have some sense of constants. And so you have to create it within yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I want to go to some questions, but yes, hey. that's a powerful concept, constants. Um, we have a lot of them. People are excited. So, uh, Diana asks, 
what signs were there in your youth that helped you understand you had these gifts? Um, so um, whether it's stories or examples where you're like, oh, <laughs> well, you I know because, uh, you know, there's a whole part of me that is the person who loves art and, and uh, creating beautiful spaces and things like that. I always seem to know color trends before they happen. Or, and I would always predict, even as a child, this color this color is going to be important. And I, I like using color even in healing. Um, so yeah, and, there, and then predicting people's behavior you know, or knowing people as a child, oh, wow, I could read things about that person that no one else could see. But then later on, it would come to bear that, you know, this person was like this. So it's, it's, all, it's guess, I guess it's just been, a, it's just been there all my life. That makes sense. That makes sense. And you know, a lot of people, I think, in life have occurrences where they can relate to that, whether it's, you know, music or a skill. And they're just like, I just know I just knew what to do. I didn't have to mm -hmm. overthink it. I just knew what to do. Yes. And I this thought. work just I like thought. shines light on that. And trust, you trust, you know, listen, listen, you and we get help along the way. We're not here alone. We do get a lot of help. <laughs> We just, really do. Yes. Really do. I was, I, I'm really connected to color too. Um, you know, I didn't quite get it. I, I'm wearing, you can't see it's like a navy blue. And I almost picked the color that you're wearing. And I was like, oh no, I, I wore that color last interview. <laughs> so I decided to, but I almost did it. You I see? almost did it. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Uh, I, uh, for, uh, and I bet uh, a lot of your audience today, a lot of, this particular color seems to um, soothe people right now. So you'll see a lot of it in your, you know, in clothing and furniture, a lot of this kind of pale sort of aqua blue. What does it represent for you? Peace. Peace. It re really, it's soothing. It's a very soothing color. It's very, very soothing color. I, I love it. It, um, when I see that color too, I think about like just easy communication. Yes. Yes. Just feels gentle and nice. It really does. I agree. Okay. So another question is, uh, let's see. It's about their kids. I have five kids who are very in tune with their empathetic and intuitive abilities. I feel like the next generation souls are coming in are more advanced and connected with source to help us ascend. So you're talking about that earlier too. Oh yeah. And a lot of parents, if they come into a certain lineage, sometimes they're there to uplift, up, upgrade the, the ancestral lineage. And, and sometimes they're not, they're the odd person or the person that's not understood. But uh, the children who come in who have parents that allow them to develop their gifts, um, they're so uh, um, blessed. They're so blessed. They are so blessed. And sometimes they'll just say something and you're like, whoa. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, so Keith asks, uh, if you are working with someone, can you tell where they are on their healing light or spiritual? I'm, I guess I'll say it like this. If you're working with someone, can you tell where they're at on their healing uh, journey or spiritual path? If I go into their, you. yeah, if I go into their space, I, I go into a special space in the in the cosmos where I can see, I can call in people who have a who are a, who are deceased. They can come in, and I can also ask questions there. Yeah, I can. And do you uh, do you feel it too when you're just like in their presence? Do you get certain feelings and understandings? Sometimes, but I, I try not to uh, keep myself dialed on all the time. All of you are out there who are doing intuitive work and healing work. You need to turn the volume down 
when you're not working. Otherwise, you'll get fried. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Certain times you tune in in certain ways. Um, another question is, how would you put your energy around something that you're looking for or looking into? I don't quite understand the question. So I think what he's trying to say is, um, how do you put your energy? So let's say if you are learning about something, or let's say even if you've lost an object, how do you start to work with your energy so your consciousness starts to get answers and connections to things that are not right in front of your eyes? So I'm... I am very methodical about it. I have a light measurement chart. Uh, you have a map. You have a dowsing. I, I, I'm a great dowser. I love dowsing. And uh, if you've lost something, don't just use your, you can, some people are very intuitive and they can just see pictures where something is. I like to take a map out with my, uh, and, and write down, uh, make a witness of what I'm trying to find and then go over a map, see where it is. That's really cool. That's really, I like that. Well, because we have to have some tools. We have to have uh, tools that help us and, and ways to uh, um, quantify what you're doing in, because we're in this particular space, planet Earth. So, you know, people like that. Absolutely. Do you find yourself using... You know, there's always, um, you know, a time where you can, I guess, let it come as it needs to come. But do you find yourself kind of using more tools to understand, um, let's say, whether it's ley lines or, you know, energy of spaces or even people? Well, it depends on what I'm working on. If I am doing healing work and I'm going into this particular space, I don't use a pendulum for that. But if I'm, if I'm doing a diagnostic, for example, to find out what's in, in a house or in somebody's energy field, I have a chart and I go douse down to see what it is. So I use I don't always uh, use my sensitive feel when I'm trying to scope out uh, uh, looking for specific things. I, I, I douse. I douse it out. But when I'm doing healing work, I go into this feel, and that feel is, is a feel of all knowing. And um, and I make that intention. But I don't sit in this space. And and if some people, <laughs> when people know you're a healer or you do intuitive work, they'll say, Tell me about myself. They'll have you. <laughs> had this they walk up to you out of the blue and say tell me what do you see <laughs> <laughs> but it can happen sometimes <laughs> luckily luckily uh that doesn't happen as much i you know i'm grateful for people's just you know <laughs> respect and things like that and understanding but uh it's kind of fun though it's kind of fun you know there's so many things just the way a person smiles you know you just know about them or even yeah. the color you know even the color that they wear that day mm -hmm. it tells you something about them so it's kind of contagious for me a little bit i, I don't even go that deep i just go well you know i just well that's you're true. here <laughs> you can't it's not like you you turned off completely because right, you're right. constantly right. getting information through your sensitive feel all day. Even when I'm driving, don't go down that street because, yes. you know, that's, it's, I'm not supposed to. That's you a know, validation. You're not supposed yeah. to have that ring. <laughs> you know, I, maybe there's an accident or something that I shouldn't be there, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Oh, I was going to say, you mentioned dousing too as a tool. And so that's, I know something that you work with and um, you use specific um, kinds of pendulums to like uh, wood and w what's the other one? Is it like a brass or? Stainless steel is, stainless, wood steel. And stainless steel are the best, right? Uh, and then uh, gemstones, I always, because they look so beautiful, people buy them. But when you're doing diagnostic work and you're trying to find information, uh, it has a, a quality to it, right? It, it has a purpose, and it may interfere with you getting a clean answer. Okay, 
Okay. That makes sense. So, I, you know, you can use it for healing. You know, if you have a heart, uh, rose quartz, you can work on the heart chakra with that one. That makes sense. Uh, crystals kind of have their own fields um, or own energy sometimes. Uh, that's how I would understand that. You can tell me if it's otherwise. And um, what I want to know too about that is, so I I don't know the world of pendulums, you know, um, as well. I, I don't. Um, and so you mentioned wood and then you mentioned stainless steel. And so I think about metal, like as this like superconductor and like wood, I think the opposite. So mm -hmm. tell me why they're both so wonderful. I'm, I'm very curious. Well, uh you know, uh, copper does have some qualities to it. Um, and what's the other one that people use a lot? Uh, uh, but I like to use stainless steel because it, it's neutral and okay. wood tends to be neutral. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Or I understand can, now. Get pre more, a little more precise answers with that. You don't have interference because of the quality of the metal, it's copper, it, you know, it may have a certain quality to it that may interfere with uh, you getting the right answer. Yeah, copper is very conductive, but stainless steel, not so much. Okay, that makes sense. I understand now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. <laughs> um, another question is, uh, oh, where is it? There it is. Um, Benedict is very interested about colors and because she's very sensitive and um, she wants to learn how to work with them more. So in your experience, how do, how do colors come into place with your healing? Well, uh, I, I've invented something called a gold kit where I use tensor rings and color. Uh, you, you have to be very careful with color because it, it, it is so potent. And um, so I use it very carefully and when I do healing work. So, uh, for example, the violet colors absolutely increase people's light, light feels, energetic feels dramatically. Very, very pale violet colors just for everyone. So people think it's green or it's something else. Uh, uh, but you can douse to say, well, which color would work best for whatever you're doing up with this person? makes sense that makes sense the 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 very pale violet colors are like the white light and the purple mixing together yes yeah um, it, i find that it's it, but you have to use it very carefully because when you say that oh no, go ahead i was gonna say when you say use it carefully can you elaborate well you know um when we first do the gold, gold, uh, gold treatments, um, years ago, it used to be that if you brought someone up over a million, the average person's 14,000, they would feel spaced out. Or it might go into a Herxheimer effect, a heal over, you may overdo it. And that's something, that's a whole other language, you know, things that healers need to know. Sometimes you can blow someone up. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't feel well. You've grown. There's, you know, you've pushed it too far, right? <laughs> yes. Sometimes people think, oh, you can do everything in one session. Oh no, yeah. You I mean, know, you had that, right? Yeah, but you know, sometimes you know, you just don't know what's going to happen, and whatever happens, happens. You know, like again, there's no rules. You know what I mean? Like you don't. You don't know what's going to happen that session. You just show up and you're like, I didn't expect that. I'm glad. <laughs> or, you know, hey, there's this section that we addressed. Um, so you said Herxheimer, I believe. Is that Herx it's Herxheimer. It's when you uh, overstimulate a person to the point where they are detoxing too rapidly and they feel like they have the flu. They may feel achy all over. They may feel like they have to go to bed. You know, it means you've gone too far. And sometimes like in homeopathy, people think, oh, you know, or herb herbal medicines. You can do that to someone. Overdo it. Yeah, that makes so sense. Yes. The colors, uh, I, I haven't taught it yet because I want to make sure, that pe you know, I have the right tools for people and that they know how to use it properly so they don't blow up. <laughs> don't blow people up please don't 
<laughs> they'll feel very, uh, you know, like a, a new them, though. <laughs> they'll definitely feel different. <laughs> yeah, they, they will feel like they caught the a flu. They'll feel achy all over and maybe even, uh, you know, feel like like they've had they have the flu. And it's because sometimes people push it too far. Absolutely. That that is a real thing. I don't think people talk about that a no. lot, but it's a it's a real real thing. Um, you know, I've even um, I've experienced it where emotionally I feel that way even after a session, yes. where you just feel extremes of emotion, but your body, like let's say, doesn't feel that as much. But um, but it's it's it can be all over with how it's mm -hmm. just the, the field took on too much. Um, and, yeah, and I, you know, every healer has done it, you know, we, you know, all done it, um, as is educating the public that you wish you were Merlin, you could do it all at once. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, it takes, it's a process. Yes, it is. It is, you know, like I've learned about it too. Like I've talked to people and they're like, Oh, my stomach, you know, it was releasing a lot, but it was like, you know, it felt raw as it was releasing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just from the flip side, I've, you know, and I go, oh, and you know, you have to learn those things. You mm -hmm. have to learn those things. It's very real. Yes. And you go, oh, thank you for letting me know. Thank you for letting me know. Um, we're, we're, we're very much human, even though we're letting ourselves go out of the equation when we're healing, but we're very much humans. So we have to learn about how we can allow for us not to get in the way. Yes. Yes, we definitely have sometimes have to get out of the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I want to give you some love through Diana. She says she loves oh, the gold yeah. kit. She, <laughs> she's, uh, she uses it all the time. Yeah. And, and she's, uh, she's a healer. She's an intuitive. She also uses it to clear houses. You know, she's, she uses it a lot. So love from Diana. She's sending you hearts. And I also want to focus too. So how can people find you, Althea, if they want to have a session with you? Um, how can people find you to learn about um, your school, Althea's International Institute for Professional Healers? Well, you can contact me through support at altheagray.com or althea at altheagray.com. Or you can go to my website, which is altheagray.com. <laughs> and the gray is A-Y. <laughs> gray is A-Y. And can you tell me a little bit about the school with what you teach people? Well, uh, right now, uh, I, I, I've been really emphasizing my professional clearers uh, uh, year-long course. And it is, for most healers uh, and people who do body work or People who uh, are therapists and doctors, they don't realize that there's this whole other world that is sitting in someone else's energy field. And it's affecting their emotions. It's affecting how they sleep, how they work. And it's, it's detrimental. And so uh, this course is, is identifying what it is and clearing it out. And I created a methodology where you can do it from your desk and you can clear people thousands of miles away. I'm working on a case now in China and I'm doing it right from my desk. Wow. wow. Yeah. And they feel it immediately. So, uh, uh, but what my, my idea behind my uh, institute is to uh, give healers uh, other tools that they can add to their practice. It's not to say you need to heal. I need to show you what I do. It, it's about expanding the repertoire that healers have. What is subtle anatomy? You know, giving healers tools and language that they can explain what they're doing, explain what they're seeing. And to have a way to quantify, did I make a difference? You can douse, you, you know, there's tools and, uh, uh, that where you can actually um, quantify. Well, yes, I did make a difference. I see a shift in their light levels. You see? And it's not just a feeling. It's actually something that you can interact with beyond that. Yes. 
Absolutely. I think people would be very excited to learn how that they can work with energy on a level where there's actually interaction in front of them with the tools additionally. I agree. Absolutely. Well, we need healers to be to, to become more professional so they can interact with someone's doctors and therapists. And so they don't see us as people who don't know what's going on. They can't describe what happened. And um, um, these are some suggestions uh, I can make. You know, we're not looked at in that way. We're not often invited to conferences to speak. I'm surprised by that, honestly. Oh, uh, it, you will see that, that then it's because healers sometimes don't have a language. They, they're they used to being experiential and, and they know they made a shift, but they don't know how to explain it. It's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's very experiential. <laughs> it's very experiential. You have to practice languaging with that. Okay, that makes sense. I understand. Um, within the school too, um, are there different like levels um, or are people learning for more than one year? Well, uh, the professional clears is complete unto itself. It's a whole year long program and okay. students learn everything from A to Z about that world. And we have an in-person practicum where people come and they, they learn everything. So when they graduate, they're genuinely uh, uh, experts. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because your community is very interactive. They're like always talking and yeah. sharing their experiences. So I was like, okay, there's people that are ongoing, like learning what they're doing with you and the tools and the learnings of the course. So I was like, okay, it's, it, it's such a rich community within that. Yes, yes. And each year a soul group comes together and, and they tend to love each other and they work with each other, they stay in touch with each other. It's, it's been a fascinating experience. This is uh, my fifth year teaching this. So wow. this, and this year they are going to learn, I'm um, expanding on the goal kit. Expanding the, the goal kit. That what we can do with the, uh, my goal kit. Right now we just use it to expand light but we're going to use it in a, in a whole different way for healing. Benedict is also saying the gold kit is amazing and professional clearing is a wonderful tool. Yes. So. She's, she's another one that uses it in her practice. You know, she's a healer in France. She's from France. Yes. Um, if I may ask too, so what um, sessions um, can people work with you with? on your website too as well, if they want to um, not only learn about, um, let's say the school with actually becoming a healer, but what if they just want to receive healing? What kind of services can they find you for? Well, on the website, there's a lot of services, but the one that I recommend the most is the Jumpstart. And that's because it includes ancestral clearing because often we're carrying stories that don't belong to us. And it's in our story and we're acting it out wondering, why do I do this? So you've got, as a healer, it's really important to clear a, a person's ancestral stories so that you can help them better. And the other one, if they're lost uh, through trauma, people lose so much of themselves. Yes. So you want to retrieve and bring back those parts of themselves. But when those parts leave, they're in the spirit world healing. So you never bring back something wounded, right? But people to operate fully, they need to have themselves back. And then in that program uh, is the re uh, repairing of all the subtle systems that get damaged through trauma. And so, you know, this is like, just imagine the circuitry is not connecting. You're not working at your full capacity. And then I have uh, the last, uh, there's five sessions in that. And the fifth one is a choice of three. And one is, let's say you have something in this life that you, no matter what you do it's there, and it keeps pounding and pounding. It's usually, it's usually from another life, past lives. Yeah, there's so that too. We look at the past lives associated with that. And then the other one is connecting you to your original divine blueprint. 
Very it's important. Beautiful. Yes. And then my favorite one is actually reconnecting people to their family of origin. Because, so, you know, I would say you have a lot of uh, probably angelic. You really probably have uh, maybe an incarnated angel. But, um, but there are people here who are not from here. And some yeah. of them are actually even fairies who've come to yeah. help with the environment. Chopping it's, down the trees in the rainforest. I mean, they're, they're, the fairies have come in and, and incarnated, in, but it's not easy for them because they're very, you know, highly evolved light beings trying to come in and help. And they get just, it's really hard on them, they're, you know. But that family of origin session is cool because you, you reconnect to that family. You don't feel so alone in this universe if you are one of those people. That makes sense. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, what you say is true. There's so many different types of energies here on earth and that we share and like interdimensionally. And, you know, bef bef before, <laughs> you know, I, I've felt and, and, and seen some things. I was like, well, maybe, but now I'm a huge believer of it. I really yes. am I'm like, no, oh, there's fairies out there. No, there's people, you know, there's beings that jump between interdimensional like portal. No, that that is a thing. It, it's like, yeah, but well, that's beautiful. I've never heard of a session like that. Yes, no, I don't know of anyone who does that, but I, I saw the need for it. And so, uh, so, that jumpstart really covers a lot. And I did it because uh, I had so many people who have been through so much therapy and healing and somehow they just haven't gotten there. And it's because of this other stuff and it gives them a better opportunity to do further healing work wherever they want, whatever they want to do. It's that a good, good place to start. Makes sense. It's like uh, sometimes you're trying to jump forward, but you don't have a support system and it doesn't have to do with necessarily just this life. That makes sense. That makes sense. Wow. I, I love hearing you speak. Um, we're at the end of our show, though. It goes so fast. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I always for having me. Uh, it's <laughs> so wonderful. Um, I enjoyed being here with you and your audience. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love talking about healing. Absolutely, Alhila. Absolutely, Althea. And I love talking about healing with you too. It puts a smile on my face. And so before we go, I always give the last word to the guest, whether they want to, uh, you know, share just a thought, uh, a positive saying, or a piece of wisdom they'd like to leave the audience with. Well, um, I would like, things are chaotic right now and, and things are putting people in fearful places. And um, I talked earlier about love. Try to, you know, uh, find ways to feel love every day. Um, whether it's watching a lovely movie or uh, being with a friend, try to cultivate that in every day, find moments of love so that you can nurture and Hold a good space for yourself. With that, every day. Thank you so much, Althea, for being here. Everybody, you can find Althea Gray on our website. Check her out with her professional healers school and also within her session. She's wonderful. With that said, um, please, everybody, we will see you next week. Go with love, luck, light, laughter, and don't forget to live. Take care. Yeah. Thank you, Althea. <laughs> the truth is here and now on WLTKDB Talk Radio at WLTKDB.com.
Thank you.